Hello, my name is Laura Harvey, Outdoor Learning Manager, and today I'm going to show you how to make this elder caterpillar. This, this is elder, and this is what we're going to use to make the caterpillar. So you can see here the leaf is, it's a compound leaf, made up of five little leaflets, and there are teeth around the edge of each one. And if you rub it and smell it, oh, it smells really strong. Apparently, if you rub it over you, it stops mosquitoes. And there are lots of flower buds at the moment. There's, there's one flower here that's in full bloom. By the end of May, they'll all be in full bloom. Perfect time to make elderflower cordial from them. They smell citrusy and fresh when they're new. And as they get a little bit older, they smell of cat's wee. They're the ones you don't want to use to make elderflower cordial. Now the stems, so this has got quite a few old stems. You don't want that to make your caterpillar. This is what you want. Nice, long, straight stems. And you see the spots on them, they're called lenticels, they're for letting the air in and out. But that's a way to tell elder. Then you get, this is last year's growth, and it hasn't got the spots. And it's, if you cut that, you'll find it's, the, um, it's too soft and squishy inside, and it's not thick enough. But this is perfect. And you can see there from the bit I cut the soft, spongy stuff inside. You can poke out with a stick to make a hollow tube, which makes a perfect bead. So this is the equipment you need if you'd like to make an elder caterpillar or snake. So I've got gardening gloves to protect my hands when I use tools. Something to cut the elder with. So I've got these secateurs. They are for cutting things no thicker than your finger. And these are loppers. And for these you can cut branches that are as thick as the handle. Then I need something to peel the elder, the outside of the elder. So I've got a butter knife or a potato peeler. Something to poke out the middle of the elder. I've got a tent peg or this is called a palm drill. I need some string or you could maybe use some wire pair of scissors to cut it with, sharpie to decorate it. You could use a little hacksaw to cut if you've got one. That works quite, that works quite well. So the first thing is to cut off a section of the elder to use. When you use tools, you open them up as wide as possible. Hold the handles always, whatever you're using. Open them up as wide as possible. And then push down. They do all the work for you. So, here is the elder with the lovely soft bit in the middle. Now, if I took that soft bit out now and then cut it, it might collapse the elder. It helps if you've got another person with you to hold the wood with gloves on while you do the loppers, that works much better, but I haven't. So, I'm going to use them like a, put my glove on to hold the wood, because I'm using these loppers one-handed, put the wood right in the middle. Make sure your caterpillar sections are not too short, otherwise it might... squash the elder. Quite long. So now comes the fun part, poking the soft pithy bit out of the middle. So I've got my glove on still to hold the wood and I make sure I don't hold it and push down into my hand. Hold it so that each end is not facing my hand. 
and then there it is pops out so just do it a few times Okay, so now I've got all my little bits, I'm going to peel them. So you can actually, when they're nice and soft, if you have a look here, you can see this, you can tell the difference between dead wood and a live wood. So fresh wood that's just been cut. Underneath the skin, it's shiny and wet and green, pale. If I find a bit that is dead, first of all, dead wood snaps. You hear that? And then secondly, when you peel underneath, it's always brown and dry. So you can tell the difference. I've got my glove on my non-working hand that's holding the wood. And I've got my butter knife in my other hand. And I make sure that the blade of the butter knife isn't going towards any part of my body. So I don't hold it down on my lap. If I was at forest school, I'd be sitting on a log with my elbows on my knees. But I'm not. And I don't have a log. So I'm going to be peeling this off. And then you can get rid of that and you've got nice fresh yellow looking deed. If I tried to write on that now, it wouldn't work because it's too wet. So I'm going to leave it in the sun for a bit to dry out. There's one. So you can either thread them on string. So if you thread them on string, string is twisted and it helps you to get the string through the holes. If you twist the string the way that it's already twisted and keep twisting it that way when you put it through the bead. Remember to put a knot at the end so they don't come off or hold on to the end so they don't come off and you can thread them on. I'm going to thread mine onto wire in a looping manner. It needs a looping manner. Thread things all on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. that round. I'm going to poke the end in because the end can be a little bit sharp. So I'll do that. Twist it round. And then it can't come off. The looper caterpillar moves like, like this. It goes. Like that. So, have fun with your caterpillar. You can decorate it however you like. With pens, or when it's dried out properly, with paints. And have a look for some caterpillars around your garden. And remember, in June, we've got 30 days wild. Sign up for your pack now for your family for all sorts of activities and games. Have fun, stay safe, and stay wild.